In the fields of the Midwest, a quiet revolution has been taking place. For the last 20 years, local farmers have been joining together to create a new industry, one that is changing the fabric of life throughout the region. Ethanol. Its success is an American story. The ethanol industry was built by farmers to the benefit of the nation as a whole. It is an unlikely David and Goliath struggle in which every American became a winner. It is the greatest story never told. Yeah, you know, the most amazing story I think of all of this is these farmers having the vision to think outside the box, to think beyond just growing corn. They're really good at that. They're the best in the world. We're the most efficient producers of corn of anybody in the world. Nobody can compete with us. We have some of the best climate, some of the best soils, but we have the best growers of any place in the world. They know how to do that, but moving to that next step and moving beyond producing a commodity into something new and different, well, that took a vision that's just amazing. It's an amazing, I think, success story. Having vision is one thing, Creating a whole new industry is quite another. In the early years, every small success was met with a setback, every victory offset by disappointment. Just because an idea is good doesn't necessarily mean that it will happen. Well, back in the 80s, it was kind of, uh, um, from the perspective I had, which was doing international trade and exports, ethanol was kind of a uh, pipe dream, you know, that there were some real passionate people that were doing the gas haul, but I don't think anybody in mainstream thought it would ever be what it is today and took it very serious. The technology used to create ethanol was changing. Originally made using a wet mill process in corn syrup plants, a dry mill process was being developed. It was less expensive and created protein-rich dry distiller's grains, an essential component of animal feed as a co-product. And so the idea of a dry mill technology, something new, something different, but that technology was improving, came along in the mid-1980s. And then again, kind of hit a lull until the 1990 Clean Air Act. But though the Clean Air Act seemed to be mandating the use of ethanol in major metropolitan areas, providing the corn growers a needed market, a powerful adversary to the farmer's dreams presented itself the oil industry. To succeed, Missouri farmers were going to need a lot of friends, including friends in high places. You know, it might surprise you to know that a lot of those guys out there on those tractors uh, have a lot of good business sense. And, uh, you know, when you've been selling $2 corn for all of your career and you're going broke at it, it makes you a pretty good lobbyist to know there's an opportunity here to maybe become profitable again. Sam Leak was a Missouri farmer turned legislator that took on the challenge of passing a bill that would encourage farmers to join in next generation co-ops that could add value to agricultural commodities. In small town coffee shops throughout rural Missouri, the talk was about investments in ethanol. Ryland Utlot was one of the founding members of the Mid-Missouri Energy Co-op based in Malta Bend, Missouri. He found that convincing farmers to band together and use their own hard-fought dollars to build an ethanol plant was not always an easy sell. I remember going out and doing these meetings and asking people to invest. And with this supposedly pretty new idea, we did three meetings a day. We'd do a meeting at 9 o'clock in the morning. We'd do one at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And we'd do a one 7 o'clock at night. My wife would ask me when I got home almost every night, she said, are you proud of what you said today? Are you proud of what you said today? You feel good about what you said? And I said, I do, I do. I don't know how it's gonna work out, but we're at least gonna have an opportunity to try. It was a bold plan, but it worked. Corn farmers from throughout the state banded together and started to build their dreams. Across Missouri, the plants began to go up. 
Macon in 2000, Craig in 2001, Malta Bend in 2005, Ladonia in 2006, St. Joseph in 2007, Carrollton in 2008. It was an incredible gamble. Though the use of a 10% blend of ethanol had been approved under warranty by all U.S. automakers since the 1980s, there was no requirement for the oil companies to add it to their gasoline. Without new legislation, the oil industry essentially held the consumer hostage by selling 100% gasoline, 100% of their product, whether it was good for the country or not. Once again, the Missouri corn farmers took the lead as citizen lobbyists. It was a, an untamed tiger that was had been let out of the cage at that time. We tried to uh, fan the flames as much as we could because we knew that uh, we had to take it as far as we could as fast as we could because we were in direct opposition to oil. We caught them by surprise back in those days. They uh, thought we were a bunch of knuckleheads from the sticks and that we couldn't get anything done is really what I think and they just didn't take us very seriously. We had said look we've got to have a market for ethanol and what about requiring ethanol to be used and so we came up with what's called the renewable fuel standard and that standard then was a requirement that oil companies had to use ethanol. Needless to say, handing over 10% of their market to a bunch of Missouri corn farmers didn't sit well with the oil industry. They responded with rumors of mechanical problems, questions about production and other misrepresentations regarding ethanol. The oil industry is really good at innuendo, half-truths, misrepresentation, and yeah, sometimes they flat out lie. And what we had to do then was to go in and, and put our reputations on the line. We had farmers that went in, and these farmers knew what they were talking about. So we battled the lobbyists, and they fought tooth and nail. But we stayed right in there with them, and we had our farmers in the Capitol every week whenever we were passing this legislation. In the struggle to pass the renewable fuel standard, both on the national level and locally in Missouri, farmers went beyond the halls of Congress and took to the streets with a public relation campaign that got a lot of people's attention. Because we had a couple of billboards that featured some uh, folks out there, some dressed in uh, Arab garb, along with a farmer, and we said, who would you rather trust? And you know, people love that. That message seemed to really hit, and it clicked. And we did as much with it as we could for as long as we could. On both the national and local levels, Missouri farmers were working with legislators to develop a strategy that would allow locally produced fuel into the marketplace. And we knew a 10% ethanol blend could go into any type of engine, whether it's a small engine, a boat engine, car engine, we knew we wouldn't have any problems with that. So the genesis was, uh, was established. We ran into all kinds of opposition. Our lobbyist in D.C. said, you can't do that. It's never been done. We said, we think we can do it. And they did. Against all odds, House Bill H.R. 6, titled the Energy Policy Act of 2005, passed both the House and the Senate and was signed into law. It called for 7.5 billion gallons of renewable, locally produced fuel to enter the marketplace. In 2007, that amount was expanded to 15 billion gallons of corn-based ethanol by 2015. Huge, huge opportunities there. Probably the best success story that has never been told. The renewable fuel standard forms the backbone of the ethanol industry. Far from being a mandate to create a market for ethanol, it simply allows for some flexibility in a market controlled by the oil industry. J.B. Eggleston was one of the organizers of the state's first ethanol co-op in Macon, Missouri. He has been fighting misconceptions regarding the ethanol industry since its inception. I just want to see us have our fair share of the market. They keep saying that we have a mandated product. Ethanol, we're mandated with these RFS standards. Tell me what oil companies had before we had ethanol. 
Was there, was that not a mandate? What other option did our consumers, what did John Q. Public have available besides oil? With the renewable fuel standard in place, the industry flourished. The gamble had paid off. Early investors in the value-added co-ops were delighted to see their monies paid back with dividends. A true transformation took hold across northern Missouri. Small towns prospered, schools expanded with the tax base, and suddenly, being a farmer made sense again. You know, it was kind of hard to uh, talk your kids into staying on a farm back in the 80s. I really think that the value-added uh, cooperatives that we've got going, uh, the ethanol plants, have really added a lot to the farm economy uh, that definitely didn't have before. Uh, this, I think, was a kind of a savior to the agricultural industry and uh, the, the co-products we make with it that actually help our livestock industry. Uh, people woke up to that and I think that's what helped the whole industry take off. The ethanol industry's benefits go far beyond a handful of corn growers. It benefits agriculture as a whole. The dry milling process breaks corn into its component parts. The sugars are distilled to make ethanol. The proteins preserved in a co-product, dry distiller's grains, which has become a mainstay of the livestock industry. Jay Schutte, a farmer and cattleman from Audrain County, Missouri, is a strong advocate of the ethanol industry. It's the dry distiller's grains that make his business work. Well, the distiller's grains go into the feed as a source of protein and fiber for the cattle. It's affected us in a very positive way. We've got a, an ethanol plant about 10 miles from here. We have gotten to partake in the profits from the production of ethanol. It's given us a market source for our corn. We've vertically integrated so that we are a producer of one of our feed sources. It's been uh, very wonderful for us. Today we have almost 300 million gallons of ethanol production capabilities in the state of Missouri. Six operating plants, all six farmer owned, all six plants, uh, state of the art plants making money. The legacy of the ethanol success story continues to reverberate throughout rural Missouri. Billy Teal is a corn farmer and an investor in the Mid-Missouri Energy Cooperative. For rural Missouri, especially in the Mold Bend area, the MME plant, it really put a spring in our step and they've taken care of the community first. If people could look at those numbers and see what we put back into the economy, they'd be amazed. Homegrown energy, new jobs, and an expanding economy, cleaner air, cheaper gas. The ethanol revolution has been an overwhelming success. But despite the clear evidence to the contrary, special interests continue to try to roll back the industry's gains, fighting to win back that lost market share. Jerry Taylor, CEO of MFA Oil, a leading supplier of ethanol products, knows the doubters all too well. Um, when we hear criticism, I think you have to really know uh, what they're criticizing. If they're, if they're talking about harmful to the engine, there's absolutely no evidence that shows that at all. We have hundreds of millions of gallons of experience with it, directly sold to customers, and there are no issues. Protecting the Renewable Fuel Standard, or the RFS, will be the next challenge in the ethanol story. One that will require the same patience, persistence, and commitment that the early pioneers of the industry exhibited. It is the driver that keeps oil at bay and it keeps you in the market. So if, if you're okay with growing $2 corn and not making any money, uh, let it go. Simple as that. Uh, things were built because we fought for them and things are lost because you don't fight for them. And that thing can be lost in a hurry. We have come a very long way from the 1970s. To a large extent, we have succeeded in our goal. We are less dependent on foreign oil, the air is cleaner, and a new industry has given hope to our rural communities. Let your voice be heard. 
protect the renewable fuel standard and the ethanol industry. Too much has been achieved to look back now.